Our next two speakers, if you've been watching Creative Live for a while, you might recognize these two birds. Uh, <laughs> or should I say, hot chicks, you know. Um, I'm gonna read something, I'm gonna read something to you. Don't mind my reading, because it's, it's, it's a, I wrote this last night while in a ponderous moment. Kenna Klosterman is the community host of Creative Live. She helps connect the dots between one photographer, one friendship, one dream at a time, and Kenna is a cultural explorer, a visual storyteller, and a say hi to strangers kind of gal. And Susan, Susan Roderick, is a manifesting, bucket list checking, experience collecting, turned single minded, focused on her new portrait business photographer. Her greatest strength and her greatest weakness is connecting with people. She loves to travel, snowboard, and talk to animals. <laughs> kind of like Dr. Doolittle, I guess. So, welcome, Susan Kenna. And I'm Susan, and you may, you may recognize us as hosts of Creative Live. So we're, yep, we are. <laughs> we're going to tell you a story about how we went on a journey around the world, and one of us had to learn how to let go and face their fears, and one of us had to learn how to hold on and make it happen. So when we left, we were both lost. We were living in corporate jobs, and we were miserable. We went on this journey to go explore and find answers, and we did even if they weren't the answers that we thought we were looking for. So corporate America made me feel like I was waiting to live. I was like, oh, is it time to live yet? I didn't want to live part time and work part time. I just wanted to live full time, feel alive all the time. That's what I wanted. <laughs> when we left, I felt trapped. I was 33 years old. I was depressed. I was anxious. I had a Wharton MBA. And the last thing I wanted to do was spend another minute in the business world. $100,000 in debt, and I was trapped. So we took a leap. Everyone said, you guys are so lucky that you get to travel around the world for a year. Well, it wasn't luck. This was a huge commitment that we made. It was a huge leap. It took a lot of guts, and we risked it all to do this trip. And it paid off in the long run, didn't it? Yeah. That it did. Uh, one of the funny things when people hear that we spent 24-7 together for a year traveling around the world, they say, wow, and you're still friends? Yeah. As you can see, we are. It was touch and go there for a minute because that Australian guy talked to me first. I don't think so. Yes, did. I do not think so. So not the best so. part about traveling around the world was that we got to travel around the world. The worst part was that we had to come home and everything that we ran for was basically facing us right here when we got back. Mortgage payments, student loans, job interviews, dating websites. <laughs> this photo, this photo of the two of us is one that we both love. We look at this and we say, wow. That is the essence of the joy that we felt traveling around the world. And yet, just because we did that, just because we were with this, these kids does not make us Mother Teresa. She's kind of always Mother Teresa, but. <laughs> Inspiration does not equal change, okay? I'm inspired by everything. A butterfly goes past my head and I'm like, it's a sign, I'm so inspired. <laughs> but honestly, honestly, inspiration doesn't make you act, it doesn't make you do anything. And coming back was an absolute struggle for me. I knew I fell in love with photography, but what was I going to do with that? It didn't make me money. I didn't know how to start. I didn't know where to act. I was just struggling. Big and time. when I came back, the economy had tanked. And my dreams and my fears tanked along with it. And I found myself back in corporate America in a cubicle, and I was paralyzed. I could not get out of bed. I was crying every day. Do you know how that feels? Do you know how that feels? Yes! <laughs> not very good. No, not doesn't very feel, good. Doesn't feel good at all. No. Not even a little bit. So at this time, um, we basically were feeling pretty hopeless, and we found this place called Creative Live. And Creative Live offered free photography education, and we were like, what the? Is this actually, a, I think you Creative Livers know exactly what I'm talking about. We were like, is this actually happening to us? We are like, Whoa! <laughs> it was like we had been lost in the woods and all of a sudden we saw a clear pathway and we knew we had to climb out. There was still a lot of work to do and yet we knew at least we were not going to die there. We had hope. We did have hope and part of the reason that we had hope. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously, seriously everyone. 
Uh, the co-owner and founder of Creative Live, we just want to say, Mr. Craig Swanson, we are absolutely completely in awe of you, sir. So Craig Swanson, Craig Swanson, I got 15 seconds here, people. Craig Swanson made a commitment to this, and this is what I need to do, make a commitment. I found photography, I found a portrait business, but I honestly, I want to do everything so badly that I don't ever do anything at all. So I need to make a commitment to something and this is the bottom line for me. It's not about necessarily finding it, it's about making a commitment to it. I've lived my whole life trying to be a perfectionist, living in fear of not being perfect, telling myself over and over, I am not good enough. I am letting go of that. I'm letting go and letting myself be free. And every day, every time I let myself go, I feel alive. I feel alive like I did in those photos with those kids as we traveled around the world. So everyone, <laughs> you guys, hold on. Let go. You guys are gonna fall and it's gonna hurt. Get back up. Listen to your heart. The answer has always been there. It's right, right here in all of you. Thank you.